Hello and welcome to week six of the 2024 Baking Challenge. This is a challenge where I have picked out 52 recipes from one of my favorite websites, King Arthur Baking, and they're new recipes and we're gonna learn them together. So put on your baking shoes or no shoes. I don't care what kind of shoes you wear. And let's get into this week's recipe, which is deluxe chocolate truffles in honor of the Hallmark holiday, everyone's favorite Valentine's Day. I don't have strong feelings one way or the other about Valentine's Day, but I do have strong feelings about chocolate. So we are going to make deluxe chocolate truffles today. And I would say let's get baking, but we're not baking for the baking challenge today. I don't know how that's going to work out, but let's get started like i said there's no baking involved in today's baking challenge recipe but we do have some melting going on um so Let's get into it. The recipe calls for two cups of chopped chocolate, and that can be kind of any chocolate of your choice, bittersweet. I mean, I guess even dark, if you're a dark chocolate fan, I'm not. Uh, I have done something a little different. I mixed, um, I mixed chocolate chips and semi-sweet together. And also I have two bowls going, and let me tell you why. This hasn't doubled the recipe, okay? I did not double the recipe but you can get very, very creative with your flavor options for this recipe, okay? Like sky is the limit. You're gonna add some flavoring or not. Maybe you don't wanna add any flavor. Maybe you just want the chocolate. I am going to add flavor to mine. For one batch, or I guess half of the batch, I'm going to use espresso powder and rum flavoring. And for the other half, I'm going with straight up vanilla. So that's why I have two bowls. So you could do that, or you could just keep your two cups of chocolate chips all in the same bowl. And they're supposed to be chopped. Um, I didn't chop mine because I'm feeling kind of lazy today and I'm just gonna see what happens. If I weren't feeling lazy, I would get out my little Hamilton Beach um, tool that I used last time with the raspberry palmiers because I could chop all this in a matter of seconds, but I have a little headache and I don't really want the noise. Um, you're going to simmer a cup of heavy cream. Uh, mine is almost there. And I've got my measuring cup here because I wanna make sure that I'm getting half a cup in each one of these. So I'm actually gonna kick my heat up a little bit. So the center of these truffles is just a chocolate ganache. Don't be intimidated by the word ganache. It sounds fancy, but it is literally chocolate and cream. That's it. That's the only thing. Well, and then flavorings of your choice. Also, you don't have to just have chocolate chips and flavor in here. You could maybe add some finely chopped nuts of your choice or maybe some um, like toffee, that would be good too. Uh, I actually have some toffee that I think I'm gonna chop up and put on the tops of the coffee flavored ones because I think that will go together. It works in my brain, we'll see if it works in real life. Um, so don't, don't get intimidated by this. The other thing you're going to want to prepare while your cream is heating up, you're going to want, if you're doing all in one flavor, you're going to want a nine by 13 baking dish. You're going to line it with either plastic wrap or parchment paper, because once we get the ganache done, it's going to get poured into there and it's going to sit in the fridge for about an hour and a half. The other thing you're going to want with this recipe is some kind of scoop. I'm gonna use one of my medium cookie scoops. I've got a couple in different sizes. You could just use a spoon. You're going to get messy when that part rolls around, which is after everything comes out of the fridge because we're going to scoop and then we're gonna roll these up. You're gonna to have to work quickly when we get to that part because the heat from your hands is gonna make that chocolate go all soft and then it's gonna get even gooier. So the recipe says to have your baking dish, line it with parchment paper, or plastic wrap. I've got parchment paper sitting here. Hopefully the weight is just gonna squish it down like so. Um, still waiting for my heavy cream to heat up to a simmer. 
I don't love this stovetop. Um, you know, when we were shopping for houses, I was very impressed with this kitchen other than the fact that it's brown. I don't, brown is not my favorite color. So I was not impressed with the countertops, but a KitchenAid cooktop right in the middle, that sounded great. Well, it turns out I miss having an island that doesn't have a sink or a stovetop on it. That's a huge, if I could ever redo this kitchen, like I'm talking gut it down to the studs, this would not be here. <laughs> um, also this KitchenAid, I don't know how long, how, when they put this in here, but it's temperamental. So I really, I have to fight with it. Scott does a lot better with it than I do, but I am constantly fighting with it. You don't want to be boiling your heavy cream because then it's going to scald. You run the risk of having it scald and then you're going to have a really nasty flavor to it. You don't want that. So low and slow, let it build up until it starts to simmer. And then when that's done, we're going to pour it on top of our chocolate chips and we're going to let it sit for three minutes. And while that's sitting, if I can wait the full three minutes, because I really hate waiting, we'll talk about what's going to happen when these come out of the fridge. So freezer, fridge. So it's got to, you know, I read through these recipes like a million times so that I can try to do this somewhat easily and seamlessly on camera, but I always get scatterbrained and get ahead of myself. So I'm going to walk you through the recipe right now while I'm waiting for this to start simmering. Two cups of chocolate chips of your choice, chopped finely because it's going to melt easier. I'm taking a risk here. Hot heavy cream, one cup, get it to simmering. You're going to pour it over your chocolate chips and you're going to wait for three minutes. You're not going to touch it. I'm probably going to touch it, but you shouldn't touch it. You should follow the recipe. You should have more patience than I have. And then you're going to let it sit for three minutes and then you're going to stir it and you're going to stir and you're going to stir and you're going to stir until it's all smooth and melted. If you're running into problems with that, you can pop it in the microwave for about 15 seconds and then stir. And then if you need to repeat that process until it's very smooth, once you get it smooth, you're going to add your flavorings. These are just the flavor combinations that I've picked out. The recipe lists several also, such as raspberry, um, like a, a coffee liqueur, like an Irish cream would go well with these, I feel like. Orange would be great. Um, peppermint, peppermint. I could see if, if this isn't too much of a pain to do, I could absolutely see making these for Christmas and having like crushed up candy canes inside with a little bit of peppermint flavoring. Um, like I said, you could put nuts, you could put toffee in here, so many different things. Like sky is the limit, use your imagination, raid your pantry, see what you have and what's gonna go together. I'd like to try orange. I know a lot of people like orange and chocolate together and I think that that could work out really well. Um, but I don't have orange flavoring right now. We are gonna need a special kind of orange flavoring uh, for one of the recipes that I've picked out. I'm gonna have to order that on Amazon because there's no way that anybody around me within the two hour drive has got that stuff. That's okay. It's not terribly expensive and I'm willing to splurge to get that recipe right. So my cream is starting to simmer finally. I really should have been paying closer attention. Don't take your eyes off of it. It's still not quite there. See, and I have this up to halfway. All right, I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> The minute I jack it up one notch, it's going to start boiling. So I really have to watch here. Don't let it boil, just simmer. This recipe is supposed to make three dozen truffles. Do with that what you will. They did not give a specific scoop size, which is a little frustrating. Also something I'm never sure about, and I should probably reach out to one of my friends that really, really bakes. The recipe says chopped finely chopped. So, okay, now we're simmering. So does that mean that the chocolate should be chopped and then measured or can it be measured and then chopped? See, I don't, that's the little tiny details that get stuck in my mind that frustrate me because I don't know which way it's supposed to go. Mm. I think I overfilled just a little. Yep, there we go. 
Okay. I can almost guarantee that I'm gonna have to microwave this a little. Ooh, that is hot. I'm just kinda, I know we're not supposed to touch it, but I'm just making sure that all of the chocolate is covered. And I'm gonna do the same with this one. And then the whole house is gonna smell like chocolate milk or just chocolate, I don't care. You know, I actually know people that don't like chocolate that's just a weird thing for me to try to understand because I love chocolate, except for dark chocolate. Milk chocolate is my favorite. Semi-sweet is fine. Any kind of flavored chocolate, obviously, it all works for me. Okay, three minute timer. While this is waiting, let's talk about what happens after we flavor everything and we put it in the fridge for the hour and a half. At that hour and a half mark, you're going to need a cookie sheet. You're gonna line it with parchment paper and you're gonna dust it with chocolate baking powder, uh, cocoa powder. I know the words for things, really. Then you're gonna have your scoop or your spoons. You're going to scoop, roll, place on the tray, okay? You're gonna go through all of your chocolate. If you're using different flavor combinations, try to remember how to keep it straight because um, you don't want to bite into a coffee flavored when you're expecting like a peppermint. That would just be weird. That would make me crazy. So where was that? Scooping, rolling, putting on the tray. When you get through all of your ganache, you're going to put that tray in the fridge for a half hour. Okay, half hour. And that gives the chocolate a chance to set back up because the air temperature is warm, your hands are warm. This is going to get messy. You're going to be a mess. Aprons, probably not a bad idea. Um, mine's in the wash, so <laughs> I'm just going to get messy and that's okay. When they go in the fridge, you're going to need to make a decision. Are you going to go easy or are you going to go a little more not easy, a little more difficult as far as what you're coating your truffles in? The recipe says that the easy road, which is perfectly fine, it's totally cool to take the easy road, you're gonna roll them around in cocoa powder. They prefer Dutch processed cocoa powder, but I looked into getting some of that and it's pricey. So I have regular cocoa powder, okay? It's Hershey's cocoa powder. I got it in bulk from Sam's Club. I'm gonna use it, I'm sure. So I'm gonna dust some of mine like that. And then the other option that you have is to put it in either a chocolate or a candy coating. I'm gonna do some of mine like that as well. What you'll need for that is melted chocolate or melted candy coating, something to use to dip the truffle in. I have a whole like Wilton cheap candy making kit, so it'll be able to keep that chocolate melted for me and it comes with like the dipper and the spoon and the rake and all that stuff. So you're gonna need that also. Plus any kind of garnish or topping that you want to put on your truffles. I am going to go with chocolate. I'm gonna go with some crushed up toffee bits and maybe later of some sprinkles for sure because I have lots of sprinkles and some of these are gonna be for Valentine's Day. Um, if you wanted to get super fancy, you could go with like a white candy coating and some colored icing. That would be fun also. Again, sky is the limit. Your imagination is kind of what you gotta live with here. Okay, it's been maybe two minutes. I don't know, how long can I obviously talk for? Who knows? So I'm gonna start stirring this one. And it's definitely, I should move this so you could see. It is definitely getting melty. It's kind of looking, I don't think I'm gonna have to put it in the microwave. Yeah, it's definitely turning into a ganache. So we're gonna stir until it's all smooth. And now that the cream is getting incorporated, I can stir it a little more vigorously here. Remember, it needs to be smooth. If you need to pop it into the microwave, that's totally fine. 
you'll notice as you get further along, you can still see um, traces of the cream. You're not gonna wanna see that. So mix until you can't see that anymore. And this one looks good. It's starting to kind of cool at the bottom, so I need to work on this one so I can get my flavorings mixed in. I'm trying to do this so I don't spill it everywhere. I have my chocolate on standby too in case I need to add some more. It's a really pretty color. <laughs> I might need to add some more to this. No, it's starting to go. <laughs> it's kind of neat to watch how it changes. Make sure you're scraping the bottom. You don't want any of that chocolate just sitting there on the bottom. And be gentle with it, especially in the beginning when it's very, very soupy because it's very easy to splash it over the edge. Oh, see, you guys can't see this either. Sorry. <laughs> So almost there. I can still see like a, a little bit of the cream in here. It almost looks like a oil slick on the top. But the more I stir, the better it gets. All right, that's good. Okay, let me check the recipe here. So this one says two teaspoons of vanilla. And I'm gonna do this one as the vanilla because this one's a little thicker and this one's a little thinner. So since I'm adding espresso powder, I'm gonna add it to this one. Maybe it'll help thicken it up some. That's one teaspoon and two teaspoons. And I say, don't be afraid to mix it up. If you want to add a teaspoon of vanilla and a teaspoon of orange or rum or I don't know, maple, whatever you have, do it. See what happens. We're, we're Bob Rossing this. There's no accidents. There's just happy little truffles. That does smell really good. I'm gonna make sure I get all of that incorporated. Now this one called for a whole tablespoon of the cocoa powder. But that seems like a lot to me because this stuff is really strong. So I'm gonna go with a half of a tablespoon. I'm just gonna make it heaping. Oh my gosh, I love the smell of this stuff. It's so good. And then I'm gonna add my, oh, I need this again. I'm gonna add my teaspoon of rum. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. All right, and then I'm gonna start mixing. I wanna get that cocoa powder all in there before this starts to set. That is the thing, when you are working with, um, when you're working with chocolate, you do have to work quickly. It's, it's one of those things where you just, you don't want it to start setting up on you before you have everything mixed. I do have, there we go. Okay, this smells really good. I did go a little heavy on the rum, but I feel like the espresso, yeah, it smells good. I'm excited about this. Okay, I'm gonna put it in our baking sheet, our baking pan. Again, if you're using one flavor, it's fine, nine by 13. I'm doing two different flavors, so I've got two square eight inch go in here. And you want every bit of this chocolate to end up in here. Every single little bit. Right, that's one. I'm gonna try to sink it in here a little. And here comes. 
comes the other. That smells really good too, with just the plain vanilla. I will say this one is a little thicker than the other batch. I really contemplated making two batches and then flavoring each one differently. And then I thought, no, it's okay. You could cut it in half, it'll be fine. Well, we'll see. We shall see. Okay. All right, this goes into the fridge for 60 minutes to 90 minutes. So an hour to an hour and a half. I'm gonna err on the side of caution and put mine in for an hour and a half because I have other things to do also. So you'll also wanna cover it. I'm gonna cut my parchment paper, put my lids on. Gosh, I love my Pyrex dishes and their lids. Um, so I will see you back in an hour and a half. Okay, it's been well over an hour for me because I got caught up with work stuff, but the, uh, the truffle centers have been chilling in the fridge and it is definitely scoopable. It's kind of solid. So before we get into this, make sure that your hands are washed. Make sure that you have a towel because your hands are gonna get messy. We're gonna start off with our baking sheets lined with parchment paper. You're gonna wanna dust it with cocoa powder. Um, my flour duster is like, that's one thing for flour, but cocoa powder is very, very fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to kind of scoop it here into this strainer. I have three of these and I absolutely love them. Um, I use them a lot, quite frequently for a lot of different things, but this is gonna make sure that we don't have any clumps and lumps on there that are gonna get bonded to our truffles. And again, I'm just using cheap stuff. I actually have the Hershey stuff, but this is already open. There's not a ton left in here. And I got the Hershey stuff, I got it from Sam's Club and it's in a giant container because this is not the only recipe that's gonna call for baking powder that we're gonna do this year. Okay, for scoops, I am using two different scoop sizes because I have two different flavors going on. And I'm not sure which one is which right now, but I know that I'm gonna do all of one flavor in the smaller scoop and all in the bigger because I'm also using these truffles to decorate a cake tomorrow. So let's see if I can determine which one this is by smell. Hmm, that smells very much like vanilla. This smells more like coffee, like espresso and rum. So I'm gonna use the small scoop for this one and we're gonna work quickly. We're gonna scoop, roll, place, okay? It's not solid, but it's solid enough. And yes, your hands are gonna get so messy. It's gonna be a mess. That's okay. Like I said before, good things can be messy. That's okay. Um, don't roll them too much. They're going to start melting, even though mine have been in the fridge for, gosh, I think it's probably been like three hours because I got distracted answering emails and um, working on a design for a client, but that's okay. I'm wondering if maybe a tiny scoop, because I don't know that we're going to get three dozen of these. And... Um, <laughs> This is, I knew it was gonna be messy. I did not realize it was gonna be so messy. Um, it's okay, it's okay because it's gonna taste really good. And that's, that's what we care about, right? We care about how it tastes. Oh my gosh. I am not loving this part. That's okay. Um, I'm probably going to stick mine in the freezer just because of how not set they are after being in the fridge for so long. So I'm, I'm going to put mine in the freezer for like 20 minutes, um, which means I'm going to have to move some stuff around. Oh boy, this is messy. 
so it's very much sticking to the parchment paper on the bottom. Um, be careful, you don't want to end up with paper in your truffles, so while you're scraping it off of there, oh see now I have it on my, <laughs> now I have it on my arm. Um, so when you're scraping it out of there, be careful that you're not getting strips of paper in as well. Um, ooh, boy, this is, this is, yeah, this is kind of the stuff that nightmares are made out of, but it smells really good. And I know it's going to taste excellent. So I'm just going to go to my happy place while I get these scooped. <laughs> this is such a disaster. Oh man. Okay. The recipe even warned it was going to be messy. I knew this going in. I knew it. I accepted the mission and that's not enough in there. Okay. It's starting to kind of gum up my scoop a little bit. So, I don't know, maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe put yours in the freezer if you're struggling. Just not for too long because it will freeze up pretty quick. I think these are very cold. So that's something. Oh my gosh, this is miserable. Yeah, I uh, hope it's worth it because I am not, not, I don't like clay. I don't like Play-Doh. I don't like sticky things. So this is not, uh, this is not making me happy right now. Um, but I'm keeping my eye on the prize, which is chocolate truffles that are going to taste great and look great. And that I made cause I did something new. Oh, Oh man, I know I'm leaving like a lot of this in here, but I can't, I can't do this anymore. So try to get this last one in as round a shape as possible. Okay, mine are done. I'm gonna, I'm going to stick mine in the freezer for probably 20 minutes and then I'm going to check on them while they're freezing. I'm going to get my candy melt started. In this case, I'm just using chocolate chips. I'm just going to use chocolate chips for my candy melt, um, which is fine. That's what you can do too. Okay. Yeah, this, this tastes really good. So, okay. Stick them in the freezer, assemble everything that you're going to need for your coating. If you're doing it the easy way, you're just gonna need um, a plastic bag with some cocoa powder in it. You drop a couple in there, you shake it to coat them, set them on a tray. If you're doing your chocolate or a candy melt, you're gonna wanna get that melted before you pull everything out of the freezer. Make sure you have any sprinkles or garnishes that you're gonna use ready to go. It's gonna be a pretty fast process. I'm gonna go clean up and I will see you back in about a half hour. Well, if you can't tell by the outfit change and the hair change, it's actually the next day. Life got busy, life got crazy, and then it was dinner time, and then I just didn't want to. So, it's fine. The truffles were fine overnight in the fridge, covered, and that gave me enough time today to go ahead and get everything ready for dipping. Now, remember, the options are you can go simple and you can roll them around in some baking powder. Not a big deal. You put baking powder in a plastic bag, put, you know, one or two at a time, give it a little shake, set it out on parchment paper. That's easy. I think you could probably also do the same with powdered sugar, maybe, or even the, um, the powdered sugar fruit mix that we put inside the cookies. I don't know how that would work, but you can experiment. There's nothing that says that you can't experiment with this and have some fun. Now, because I'm gonna use mine to put on a birthday cake, I'm going to dip mine in chocolate. The theme for the birthday cake is chocolate and love. And I, <laughs> I made two different sizes yesterday. Um, these, I thought that these were the 
um, espresso ones, but these are the vanilla and the little ones are the espresso ones. So let me explain my setup here. What I have is this little Wilton candy maker. It's not expensive. And, you know, I thought it was kind of a frivolous um, purchase when we got it, but I have used it so many times and it comes with all of these fantastic tools. Um, let me see if I can't zoom in a little so that you can see a little closer. It's all right, you just need to be looking at my hands anyways. Whoop. I'm great with camera controls here. Okay, so this little Wilton candy melt, it melts candies, chocolates, cheese, I would imagine. And it came with all these fantastic tools. This is a neat little scoop. Um, you've got this one that you can pour. You've got a little poker. <laughs> A, another dipper, I guess you can put fruit in this. It's got a little hole there and dip that. And you've got this fork also. I'm probably gonna use a combination of this fork and the dipper. You can put your stuff in a glass proof or heat proof glass bowl. Um, put your chocolate in, microwave it a couple times, 15 seconds, make sure that you're stirring in between. And you can do it that way too. There's nothing that says you have to have all of this, but I will post this link um, below. And also because I'm using all this to decorate and I, I hate having leftover chocolate, I have one of my little heart molds right here with some sprinkles in. That's the other thing. Think about what you're going to, if you're dipping these, you're going to maybe want to put some garnish on it. I have got Heath bits for some. I think I'm going to put the Heath bits on the coffee ones. And then I've got sprinkles for the other. Um, my dad's birthday was in January, but we never got a chance to celebrate. So we are going to be celebrating tomorrow. So his cake is kind of going to be a Valentine's theme. Last year it was, um, it was, I did the cover art. I turned the cake into an album cover from Brick and a Wall. Um, dad and I have a lot of music in common. So you're just going to dip and tap to get the excess off. I don't like wasting chocolate. Um, and then you can put your flat, oh no, it melted right through there. Oh dear. <laughs> okay, don't, don't dip it too much, I guess, because then you're gonna melt your ganache center. So I'm gonna turn this down. Actually, I'm just gonna turn it off. Ooh, okay, lesson learned. Um, Maybe I'll do the fork instead for this next one. Boy, I did not see that as an issue. So work quickly when you're doing this. Don't leave it submerged in the hot chocolate because your ganache will start to melt. And nobody wants a melty ganache because then it's just gonna look weird. Okay, these are not gonna be pretty. Remember I, oh shoot, it fell right in there. Um, not going to be pretty by any stretch of the imagination. My truffles are not pretty and I'm okay with that because I can tell you what they are. They are tasty. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add some sprinkles to this because it seems like this chocolate's just going to go and dry pretty fast. So I'm going to do some different kinds of sprinkles. Okay, let's turn this around in here and get it out quick. <laughs> and you may have to add more chocolate to your, um, to your bowl and then reheat it. That's okay. It's, you know, there's no set, oh my gosh, this is a mess. There's no set amount here. I think I'll go with the uh, heart sprinkles that I used last week. Um, and yeah, I have a candy mold sitting here. It's got Heath in some and the different colored sprinkles in the others um, because I know I'm gonna have leftover chocolate and I don't like wasting it. So I'm gonna make these little hearts to also go on the cake. Um, you know, it's kind of funny but between the, the two of us here, the two adults here in this household, Scott is infinitely better at, um, at making these. 
he does all of the dipping. I do all the Christmas baking and he does all the Christmas candy making. And it's a match made in heaven, I tell you. And if he were free, he would probably be here doing this for me. <laughs> but he is busy today and that's okay. Because I need to just get over it and do it. Okay, I feel like I'm kind of starting to get the hang of this. Um, I feel like these are looking a little bit better. Maybe, <laughs> maybe possibly. I am absolutely gonna have to add some more chocolate though. I'm just kind of rolling mine and then trying to grab the excess off. That one slid off relatively easy. And I'm also reshaping them because if you remember mine were pretty, so I'm just kind of very lightly and quickly trying to smooth down those rough edges because if you remember correctly, mine were very sticky yesterday before I put them in the fridge. So, okay. Oh, and I also have, um, I'm gonna turn this back on and add some more chocolate. Um, I have a piece of parchment paper underneath my wire rack. I do this every time I have to ice something that I know it's gonna be a drippy, messy mess. Where's my chocolate chips at? There they are. It's really funny, I opened this and didn't realize that there was a reclosable top on it. So, again, there's really no way to kind of measure what you need, but I went through almost all of that for these, and it's the same amount that's on the tray back there. Plus, I want some left over to make these hearts. So, I'm just gonna add more chocolate and get it melted. Clean up with these is really simple too. Just some hot soapy water and a good rinse. It's a silicone cup. Um, and the kit came with this other second one, which is divided. So you can do two different colors or flavors in there. That's pretty cool. Um, it doesn't take too long for this to melt. And I like having it because I don't have to keep popping my bowl back into the microwave, depending on if I'm like melting a ton of chocolate. It saves the legwork and the hassle of having to stop to remelt things. So this is getting there. You could also add some flavoring to your melted chocolate, but I feel like that would kind of be overkill since we added it to the ganache in the centers. Okay, these little tiny ones are gonna get topped with the toffee because those are the coffee flavored ones. And I feel like, oh, I should probably, is it too late? No, it's not too late. Um, I'm gonna put red sprinkles on these too. Like I said, they're not gonna win any awards for being pretty, but they are gonna be tasty and that's okay. That's the whole goal, right? So what did I, I put those chocolate chips in here like two minutes ago and they're already melted. So on to these little tiny ones and they're sticking to the paper so I'm just gonna twist them to get them off. Throw it in here, roll it around in the chocolate, spoon chocolate over the top. Try to get it as covered as I can, pull it out and Give it a couple taps and then on to my sheet. So again, we're getting dirty again <laughs> with this part, but a little messy, that's okay. That's okay. Um, you know, Super Bowl is tomorrow. Go Chiefs. 
because, you know, Midwest, Midwest town. You know, I lived in St. Louis when the Rams were here. And so obviously, because I'm a big root for the hometown kind of girl, um, and then that whole debacle happened and our team went away. So the Kansas City Chiefs were the next closest hometown. And I, I do enjoy football. I always have. I'm more of a hockey girl myself. Go Blues. But I am excited about this Super Bowl. It's going to be a tricky game for everybody. But... I'm excited to watch it, and Scott's got all the snack planning done. We're having a low-key at-home Super Bowl with all of our favorite snackies. Scott's going to make some chili. He makes the best chili in the world. It's so good. And I don't think the weather's supposed to be too bad, but I will eat chili in the middle of summer. Like, just give me all the chili. Yeah, these are looking better. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of it. They're still just big mounds of weird looking chocolate, but I feel like I'm getting a little faster at this. Practice makes almost perfect. So perfection is impossible to achieve. So don't even try. I like to go for good enough. I take that back. You can achieve perfection in certain things. You can achieve a perfect grade or complete a project perfectly, but it's not the end all and be all of the world. All right, I have six of these left to coat and my chocolate is running low. So I'm going to add even more chocolate, which is fine. Because if it gets to be a ton extra, what I'll do is I will add a little bit of corn syrup um, to the leftovers after I get the molds poured. And that'll thin it enough that I can put it in a squeezy bottle and drizzle it over the edges of the cake. So I guess I can probably stop this video. You don't need to see me do the rest of these. So while this melts, let's talk about it. Okay, so these probably are gonna need some time to set up. You could probably put them in the fridge if you want. I don't recommend the freezer. Freezer, When you pull them out, they're gonna start to sweat. Well, that wraps it up for our deluxe chocolate truffles. I hope that you enjoyed this recipe. If you baked along, feel free to tag me in your photos on Instagram. Go to the Facebook page to show me what you came up with. I want to know, how did you take this recipe? What were your favorite, favorite flavor combinations and how did you make it your own? That'll give me some ideas for the next time I want to try this. And I am going to try this again. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. This is part of the 2024 baking challenge that I have given myself this year. 52 weeks of the year, 52 brand new recipes that I have never tried before. If you've missed the first couple weeks, it's not a big deal. You can go back and watch those and bake those if you want. You can pick up from any point in the series. We're not getting crazy with it. This isn't a set in stone thing for any of you. It is for me because it's my challenge. But I hope that you pick up the recipes that you're interested in. And I hope that you bake and have fun because that's what we're all about here. Having fun, a little bit of chaos, a lot of messes, some failures, but hopefully most successes. I'll see you next week.